Welcome into the Midweek Mailbag Show presented to you by Fantasy Points. My name is Nick Scripp. I'm your host of this show. I have the show every single week where I answer questions from both Twitter and the Fantasy Points Discord. So three weeks of football in the books. Definitely still some questions at hand. We have some good ones for this specific week. So let's kick things off. These questions are all from Twitter this week at Newman underscore RJ. What's your panic level on Justin Jefferson? One through 10. He says, I'm currently at a six. So the panic is that Justin Jefferson has scored under 11 fantasy points in back-to-back weeks. 4.4 in week three. So definitely not what we expect out of Justin Jefferson. I believe that's his second lowest score through his three-year career. Detroit's Jeff Akuda had a good day against him, and it was reported that he was double covered. Darius Slay, he had that matchup in week two. Six targets in week three, but prior to that, he was number seven for wide receivers and targets with 23, and number five in both receptions and receiving yards through two weeks. Week one was the expectation for the potential wide receiver one of this season. Nine catches for 184 receiving yards two touchdowns, and 39.4 fantasy points. Talking about a third-year wide receiver who's been wide receiver four and wide receiver six in his first two seasons, 1,616 receiving yards and 10 touchdowns last season. I am sure Cooper Cup was getting double-covered and Kevin O'Connell last season being his offensive coordinator for the Rams, who is now Justin Jefferson's head coach, was able to be creative and scheme up plenty of open looks for Cooper Cup. So, you know, maybe it's it's bold here saying I'm only concerned at a level two. But again, I, I feel like we've seen him be so good for fantasy. Uh, he opened up the season great. He's had some good volume. He had a really down week. And I, I trust Kevin O'Connell as the head coach. Uh, who was part of Cooper Cup being successful last season to find ways to get his wide receiver one successful. So uh, I feel like he's going to be back to double-digit targets this coming week and back to Justin Jefferson, even in a, a Saints matchup. Second question on the list here, at jblogn1, CD Lamb redraft value, full PPR, sell, buy, or hold? So I'm just going to spell that guy out again. At J-B-O-L-O-G-N-1, just in case I butchered that. But uh, a lot of panic going on into this past week, going into this past week, knowing that Cooper Rush was going to be under center with Dak Prescott, uh, missing six to eight weeks with his injury. Eight catches for 87 receiving yards on 12 targets and a touchdown for 22.7 fantasy points in week three with Rush. Not bad. The last two games, he has been targeted heavily by Cooper Rush, who's filled in for Dak Prescott. Only three players have had more targets through uh, these three weeks than C.D. Lamb. He is currently the wide receiver 23, with his worst week being a full game with Dak Prescott in week one, where he was under five fantasy points. So weeks two and three specifically, he's wide receiver 13. Situational, I think we can say he's probably not the top like six guy, seven guy that a lot of people had him ranked as and projected as. But if I had him, I'm not selling him for the low right now. Uh, when he is seeing, you know, pretty consistent targets, and and I, f- I feel like we trust his talent enough to say that he is a guy we're still going to stick in lineups, despite not having his his uh, you know QB one for the season. I might sell if I had him to a team really needing a wide receiver and still has some faith in CD Lamb like I do if they have a surplus of running backs and I need a running back and we could do a a one for one deal, probably just holding them though. Right now. Um, If the other manager in my league though is currently panicking, I I might shoot some offers. Uh, I feel like, again, he's a solid talent who's consistently getting targets this season. And even if the quarterback situation is there, he's still going to get the volume that I think that he can produce with, you know, Curtis Samuel, for example, is a guy, maybe I'd start with him and, and, and put him on, the table for that other manager who might be panicking right now and say, Hey, how much more do I, I have to give with Curtis Samuel to get to CD lamb. So again, when it comes to CD lamb, probably more of just a hold right now, the targets are good. Um, if somebody is panicking and wants to sell them for the low, I think that's when you can step in and see, Hey, you know, I, I got this piece that 
I don't really see working out for the long run, but has been pretty decent. Maybe I can start with that guy and uh, shoot an offer for CD Lamb. So probably a guy we we see finishing now top twenty versus top you know ten somewhere in that you know middle range. But I don't think he's going to have a dud of a season if he's getting you know ten plus targets a game here. The next question at MKB Fantasy. Would you drop Hawkinson for David Njoku or Gerald Everett? Non-PPR redraft. So I could dive into the comparisons of all three of these tight ends. Uh, Everett, he's been rock solid. You know, David Njoku just had a huge receiving day in week three. Hawkinson saw seven targets both weeks one and week two. Only four in week three. He has yet to score 11 PPR fantasy points. But you have to pay attention to the Detroit Lions right now and what's going on with their team. So, come on, Ross St. Brown was diagnosed with a minor ankle injury. I don't know if that means he is going to be out this week. Is he going to be out, you know, two weeks? Is he not going to be out at all? Something to pay attention to because we know the volume that has been coming his way. DeAndre Swift for the Lions. Maybe he hasn't been getting... The you know eight re- reception games like uh, like maybe some of us who have him want him to get, but he's still very much so a factor in the passing game. So I think there's a chance that both Amon Ross St. Brown and DeAndre Swift miss time who are involved in the passing game. Even if it's a week or two, I think this can mean a good bump in TJ Hawkinson's target share potential. He had seven targets apiece those first two weeks. If those two guys are out of the mix this coming week. I'm sure DJ Chark gets a bump, maybe Josh Reynolds. TJ Hawkinson should be right in that boat as well. Eight games of eight-plus targets, with three of them being 11 targets in 2021 for TJ Hawkinson. Is that you know, And that's with him missing the final five games. So that's some pretty good targeted games. So we've seen him in the past for PPR be a top five tight end back in 2020. I don't think it's good to drop him now for those other two guys, even though, again, Gerald Everett's been pretty good. Uh, he's capitalized on Keenan Allen, the one game being out of the mix. Uh, David Njoku had his first big day. I, I think the timing would be bad to drop him now, just seeing that TJ Hawkinson might have a bump in his his uh, role here. At Anthony Fantasy 2, should David Montgomery miss time? How should we value Khalil Herbert on our fantasy teams? So David Montgomery, ankle and knee issue, uh, currently listed as day-to-day. I, as of right now, Tuesday night, have not seen the updates that say, hey, he's going to be out two weeks, three weeks. He's not going to be out at all, but it's definitely something to pay attention to. But Khalil Herbert last game uh, took over for David Montgomery when he exited the game. 20 carries for 157 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Best scoring fantasy running back on the week with 30.9 PPR fantasy points. He capitalized on a great matchup, but he still had to go out and do it. In 2021, when playing a majority of the snaps, weeks 5, 6, 7, and 8, taking over again as a rookie for David Montgomery, he averaged 19.5 carries per game, 68.5 rushing yards, 0.25 touchdowns, 2.25 receptions, and 13.45 fantasy points per game. Two of those specific weeks, he was above 18 fantasy points. One note about the Bears right now, they are pushing the run game a lot this season. If we look at pass first run, everybody wants to make fun of the Bears for their passing volume so far. But again, we got a team that is uh, 2-1 and right now. And and I, I guess that's the route that they're going to take. And, and knowing that, it's a bump in whoever the lead back is for the Bears. Justin Fields has 45 passing attempts. The Bears have had 104 rushing attempts. A difference of 59. That's a big difference. So if Herbert is the lead guy, just seeing he's been pretty successful in the past, filling in for David Montgomery and seeing that Chicago is really pushing the run and giving a lot of work to the lead running back. Regardless of the matchup, Herbert is a must play. Volume is king in fantasy, and the running back for the Bears right now is getting a ton of volume. We just saw it last week with 20 carries for Khalil Herbert is the guy coming in for the lead running back. 
I also think if Dave Montgomery is back, you know, having a huge game like that, I, I doubt he's just going to go back and, and go to, uh, you know, three touches a game or, you know, I, I, I don't have that in front of me right now, but I feel like if Monty's back, Khalil Herbert has shown that he, to the new coaching staff too, that he should get more time on the field. And maybe he carves out his own role that uh, um, can be useful for fantasy, especially if they want to run the ball this much. But definitely if he's the lead back, Khalil Herbert, put him in your lineups this week. Uh, the volume is going to be good. Chicago's really pushing the run. At Smoky Hell NFL, what is to be done with, well, in all caps, any New England players with the Mac Jones news. So Mac Jones, high, uh, high ankle sprain, surgery right now is an option. He's to miss several, several weeks. So it should be uh, Hoyer is the uh, veteran backup on the depth chart uh, to step up. So let's just take a big look at uh, the, the Patriots' fantasy options. So Jacoby Myers had a good week, too. 18.5 fantasy points, catching nine of his 13 targets for 95 yards. He missed week three with a knee injury. Not sure yet what the status is on him returning. Hunter Henry, in all honesty, he's been awful. Uh, he's scoring under five fantasy points. And I'm referring, when I say fantasy points, I've been referring to PPR this whole time, but scoring under five fantasy points all three weeks. And he's had, had a total of five targets in those three games. So not, not good there. Uh, been a split between the running backs. Damian Harris has played 39, 40, and 38% of the snaps through three weeks. He scored two touchdowns, which is what has given him a boost for his output, which is pretty much what we saw last year for Damian Harris. Ramondre Stevenson has seen 62% of the snaps the last two games. He had a big week three with 20.1 fantasy points, four catches, and a score on the ground for that game. Devontae Parker. Uh, gave us like a 2019 Devontae Parker glimpse uh, with five catches for 156 receiving yards this past week, week three, 20.6 fantasy points. We got a veteran quarterback. You know, he came into the NFL uh, with Hoyer in 20, uh, 2009. The last time he played a full game was 2019, week 10. I'm not sure anything is to be done necessarily with these guys. Um I do really like Ramondre Stevenson, seeing that he's getting that much of the snaps over Damian Harris. He's on the field more right now. Um, he's trending towards being, you know, a guy you might want to trade for, especially if, hypothetically, the Patriots want to emphasize the run, knowing that Mac Jones is out. I'm not saying that, you know, they have no trust in in Hoyer or if it's Zappi coming in, who's the uh, the other quarterback, but... I could see them, you know, thinking to them, themselves, hey, Damian Harris, Ramondre Stevenson, let's get them plenty of work. And seeing that Ramondre Stevenson is the guy that gets the, the passing work, I think that gives him a big bump right there. The fact that he's playing over 60% of the snaps. Um, Ty Montgomery is on the IR, who is uh, coming into the season, is maybe their, their pass catching running back. I, I like Ramondre Stevenson as a, a potential trade target right now uh, before the snap percentage goes up and he has another big, big week. I think a lot of people still look at the backfield and say, hey, it's really split. It's a committee, but the, the snap percentage is, has been separating a bit. And now Ramondre Stevenson has been getting the, the pass catching work, four catches last game on five targets. It's you know worth noting right there, especially with a veteran coming in who, who might might use the uh the running back a bit more. Jacoby Myers, you know, I again check on the the status. He, he's a guy that gets good targets, uh short yardage gains. Devontae Parker, if you want to throw a dart, if you're in a deeper league and say, hey, maybe I should roster him. Uh he's shown upside in the past. Maybe what he showed us in week three can happen more often and he can carve himself out a significant role, but I'm not super comfortable putting anybody directly into my lineup right now, but I, I I do like Ramondre Stevenson, especially if you just lost DeAndre Swift. If you uh I'm trying to think of another big running back uh injury, Dave Montgomery, and you don't have Khalil Herbert if he was to miss time. Um Alexander Madison, if you don't have him, and Dalvin Cook is out. Uh there's been some banged up running backs, so Ramondre Stevenson might be a guy that slowly we can use. Uh, especially if we're depleted at running back. At T-Seal 14, 
for the next question. Are you buying or selling the Jets offensive pieces with the uh, imminent return of Zach Wilson? So staying uh, redraft focused here, but uh concern is Zach Wilson is will come in and bring uh, the pass catchers down, right? Um, the report came out that he is expected to return this week, week four, uh, following that meniscus surgery that he missed three weeks for. Uh, three and 10 quarterback record, 55.6 for his completion percentage, nine touchdowns to 11 interceptions for that ratio in 13 games he played as a rookie. And now you got to think about him probably being less mobile coming off of that knee surgery. Garrett Wilson had his big breakout game week two, eight catches for 102 receiving yards on 14 targets and two touchdowns for 30 fantasy points. He left the game briefly in week three, but he did still score 12 fantasy points and had 10 targets. Elijah Moore has yet to have a game at 10 or more fantasy points. It hurts saying that as a big Elijah Moore truther. I still think it's encouraging seeing him play 89, 87, and 94% of the snaps and getting 10 targets this past game. To me, Elijah Moore is a buy candidate just because I feel like the cost likely isn't really high right now for him, especially with the spotlight uh, shifted to Garrett Wilson and also people being iffy about the Jets offense with Zach Wilson returning. He's shown through camp, through preseason, and in a small window last year to have a connection with Zach Wilson as well. Anyone who has Garrett Wilson is probably staying put. If you have him, there's no reason to sell a talented rookie first-round wide receiver who had a massive week in week two. So even if you have concerns, if you have Garrett Wilson, you're not doing anything with him, right? Uh, he showed you that he can perform at a high level. And um, I think there's no sign saying, hey, now is the time to sell high. Uh, usually you sell high for guys that nobody expects to perform well and really don't have like a big uh, resume to do so, but but go out and, you know, ball out. Travis Fulgham from the past. Like that's a good example. Uh, a first round rookie with a good profile who goes out and, and balls out. Uh, I, I don't think that's like, Oh, I better go sell and capitalize on this, this value. So um, Tyler Conklin has been solid the first three weeks. I want to mention him as well. Good target volume. I think he's a good waiver ad if available. He's shown to have receiving yard upside in week three. He scored in week one, nine and 11 targets for Brees Hall so far. So some people have been concerned about Zach Wilson utilizing the running back through the air less than Joe Flacco has. But I'm thinking, and maybe I'm overthinking it, but I'm thinking if plays break down and Zach Wilson can't utilize his legs to the extent that he wants to after that you know, knee surgery, the meniscus issue, maybe the running back on the field is a safe option to go to if he's not going to scramble out of things. So again, you know, we can we can dive deep into, uh, you know, more analytics with that and, and, and how, you know, Zach Wilson has targeted running backs in the past. But you have to also understand that if we we see Brees Hall doing well in the pass catching department, it's the same offensive coordinator. It's the same head coach. And uh, looking at Brees Hall and, and, and seeing the targets, I think he still has really good PPR value. And I think he himself is a guy that I might try to buy in a redraft right now because he hasn't taken over completely the backfield. Michael Carter is still very much so there, but just seeing like his usage be pretty efficient, uh, or I'm sorry, him be pretty efficient with his usage, seeing he's getting those targets. I think he's going to continue to have his role grow. And if you want some depth to the running back position and, and the current manager is a little iffy on the situation, Michael Carter is getting too many touches. I don't like Zach Wilson. Now is probably the time before we see Brees Hall, you know, take over the snaps. So, again, Elijah Moore hasn't performed well. He probably can get him for a low. Uh, Garrett Wilson, you're holding because why would somebody trade first round rookie who has been balling out? Tyler Conklin, question mark, uh, add for the tight end position who's done good all three weeks. Brees Hall is the guy I'm looking at. So, maybe I, I, I'm – a little too optimistic on the uh, the Jets offense, but that's how I feel about those guys. But that'll do it for today's show. Usually answer about five or six questions, uh, depending on what comes in. But uh, we ask in Discord through our Fantasy Points uh, subscriber Discord and also on Twitter every single Monday. Hey, what do you guys want to know? I take some notes, 
come here on the show here and uh, uh, break down things. So if you're interested in, in submitting a question, you can at me at my Twitter, at P2WFantasy. You can comment on the post from the Fantasy Points live Twitter page. Or if you are a subscriber, which you should be, you can ask in the Discord. So thank you guys for tuning in and good luck in week four.